Welcome to my presentation. My name is Alnerindo Graziano Al, and I'm the CEO of Silence in Cyber Ranges. Today, we are going to talk about something that uh, I am uh, very passionate about, and uh, which I think is uh, extremely interesting, especially in the security domain, and that's the attack simulation. Um, and it's a domain that has been growing quite a lot in the last few years, and um, uh, there uh, we have witnessed uh, the development and uh, the appearance on the market of a number of solutions and uh, a number of use cases. And uh, it's very important to understand uh, the difference between those in order for organizations to be educated about uh, uh, how to best uh, meet their needs. And uh, for this, we're going to start looking, obviously, at the attack simulation, and we're going to look at different ways of uh, uh, doing attack simulation, different products or technologies and different use cases. A little bit about us. We are a, uh, a consultancy company, that company that deals in uh, uh, only information security, from uh, uh, system security, system integration, to security audits, to uh, providing a managed security and 24-7 SOC. Uh, and as part of our uh, uh, product, one of the uh, uh, products in, uh, in, uh, in our portfolio is a next generation cyber range called Cyber Ranges. Uh, it's a platform available uh, on, uh, on cloud uh, or hosted um, or on premise or as a portable unit. And um, we have been involved in, uh, in cyber ranges and related services for a number of years. We provide national cyber drills or even regional. Um, we are the platform of choice of the United Nations and uh, we do security training, competence assessment, uh, uh, CTFs, national competitions, and also obviously uh, attack simulation. Uh, and we use quite a lot of that for, uh, for security training. So uh, why attack simulation? Well, there are many reasons why we want to simulate an attack or an adversary, as sometimes uh, uh, the market uh, um, defines it. But uh, the, the key reason is to, uh, um, to, uh, to gain a, an understanding of the security organization from, uh, from the eyes of the attacker. You know, what would the attacker see? What would the attacker get, uh, uh, be able to gain access to and how easily uh, would the attacker um, gain access to you know the, the crown jewels of the organization uh, or uh, you know how uh, how good are we in regards to security what is the, the how good is the security posture of the organization and uh, um, you know can we withstand a cyber attack and continue operating and providing our business services so that's uh, cyber resilience and uh, and finally um, uh, security uh, training uh, requires attack simulation because uh, uh, it's uh, all uh, well and good to train on how to use a uh, SIM or an EDR or, uh, uh, or antivirus or any security controls that we have in an organization and to be proficient in the use and the setup and the operation of that uh, control. But what about uh, uh, when we are under attack? Because obviously under duress and under attack, the, uh, the focus, the ability to deliver uh, changes, and therefore uh, the ability to simulate attacks uh, is very important in, uh, when it comes to uh, security training. Now, before we talk about uh, attack simulation, it's also important to understand the difference between simulation and emulation. Uh, when we talk about simulation, we're really uh, talking about uh, um, simulating or replicating the behavior of the attacker, including the actions, the the, the activities uh, and um, uh, the the key thing is uh, that we are not actually using the same tools uh, and taking the exact same action of the attacker so we are simulating that uh, we are implementing those actions differently uh, so um, a typical example is a phishing simulator where we are simulating the, the the phishing emails being sent but the attachment doesn't contain the malicious document um, or it does contain a uh, non-benign uh, uh, document, but the impact is uh, not the same as if um, the, the person really clicked on the phishing email. Um, emulation instead, uh, when we're talking about emulation, really the, the actions, the behavior of the attacker are replicated in an environment which is an exact replica of the, the real one. It basically simulates the... Um, the, so ideas to the same rules, the same behavior, the configuration 
of the entire system. A typical example is uh, uh, using, for example, a, uh, a cyber range to, uh, to, to, uh, to emulate the, the infrastructure of the organization. So we can have really um, you know, the Active Directory, the, 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 the exchange, the e-banking server, uh, the mail server, anything that we, we, we like. Um, and uh, the, the difference is you know, the purpose. The purpose of that system is for training and attack simulation, is not for running operational uh, business. And in this case, we can simulate everything without fear of uh, uh, compromise and production environment. Um, now, a typical example of uh, uh, attack simulation is that provided by uh, red team simulation or red team exercises. Now, a red team simulation is um, as real as it gets or is as real as it can get. We are basically uh, simulating a, uh, an attacker um, and um, uh, simulating an attacker with specific uh, uh, capabilities, specific motivation an attacker with a specific profile and therefore it could be a, um, a foreign uh, a foreign state it could be a, a competitor it could be a, a cyber crime uh, um, uh, organization depending on the, the threat actor depending on the threat actors motivation and capabilities then we are able to simulate what that attacker would do and the TTPs the ta te um, uh, tactics techniques and procedure to be used in real life and that's why Often, uh, cyber um, so red team exercises are also simulated, uh, taking into consideration real cyber threat intelligence that provide actually um, information to the organization about the threat actors, their um, capabilities, their um, their motivation, and so on and so forth. And the objective of the red team simulation is to um, to uh, to verify the real risk exposure of the organization. So. Uh, how easily can an attacker gain access to critical assets and critical information? And um, uh, can we use this information, can we use this assessment to mature our cybersecurity uh, level? Um, very famous framework, uh, European level, is the Tiber EU framework, which helps organizations um, procure, plan, and execute a a red team simulation and it provides a number of guidelines a number of templates and as you can see it has a it is quite a, a lengthy process for which the Tiber EU framework provides a number of guidelines and templates but it's a process that takes months to uh, to execute and for this reason uh, that's actually one of the the, the, the cons or the disadvantage is that uh, while very realistic it also takes time to execute it's costly and uh, because of that you cannot run it you know more than you know, once or twice maximum per year and therefore in order to uh, to execute the the continuous improvement cycle you have to wait for the next time you run the red team simulation uh, then you have attack simulation tools these have developed quite a lot in the last uh, few years uh, as a way of, you know, because on, on one hand you actually have the penetration testing tools. So these are the tools that allow you to uh, verify, let's say, uh, a vulnerability or exploit a vulnerability. Uh, but then you also have attack simulation tools which provide you additional capabilities to simulate what uh, real threat actor will do. So, for example, the establishment of a uh, command and control server, uh, communication uh, channels with the, you know, the, the, the C2 uh, servers and, and the botnets and uh, um, the data exfiltration and so on and so forth. And uh, um, there has been quite a development in this domain and uh, they are primarily tools used for, you know, red team simulation and security training. So, red team simulation, I want to simulate a real attacker I'm going to use one of these tools in order to deliver a red team simulation. So these are tools that are used for that purpose. Or there are also uh, attack simulation tools which have been developed more for use in security training. And the way they work, um, they are deployed on top of a, a simulation environment that is normally implemented through a cyber range. And there we can uh, uh, unleash or configure these tools for execution in order to generate attacks and events which can then um, uh, uh, populate you know sim uh, log management system of um, uh, endpoint security solutions and uh, can be used for uh, security training uh, 
Um, they are very effective tools for also verifying the, the configuration and the effectiveness of security controls. So I can verify, for example, if uh, the, the, the EDR or uh, the SIM have been correctly configured. Uh, we can also use them in cyber ranges, as we, we said, and they also help prioritize the, the risk remediation. So I can uh, easily understand or more easily understand which assets are most uh, at risk and which security controls need to be prioritized for remediation. The cons is that the, the attack simulation capabilities are, are limited because the attack is simulated uh, on a production environment and therefore uh, there are limitations to what you can and want to do in order not to disrupt the production environment. Uh, and even if you run it on a cyber range uh, environment, the, the training use case is limited because you're not actually using the real malware, you're not using the real uh, infected document, um, you are simulating the behavior, but you're not using the, the, real, uh, the real malware. Um, then you have breach and attack simulation solutions. These have become extremely popular uh, in the last two years, and uh, they have uh, developed further on the, the attack simulation tool. So the idea is that whereas an attack simulation tool is effectively a, an offensive tool used by a security professional to uh, mimic and the behavior of a, uh, of a threat actor and therefore to perform red team simulation or even um, uh, to provide red team services, breach and attack simulation solutions uh, are more of a, an audit tool. In other words, they help automate the red team simulation or the, 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 the adversary emulation in order to provide a more automated and scalable view of the attackers so that the organization can configure, schedule, and execute these attack simulation and uh, on a regular basis verify the effectiveness of their security controls and uh, uh, validate their security posture. And um, the good things about these uh, breach and attack simulation solutions, because they are uh, developed and they uh, serve more as a, an audit uh, solution, they also then provide recommendation to mitigate mis mis uh, these gaps and that uh, they map the, the results to the MITRE attack framework showing where basically the, uh, the APT or the campaign carried out by the attacker or you know, the simulated campaign has been successful, which phase or um, uh, where in the, in the attack uh, uh, framework the attack has been successful. Um, key use cases, as I said, obviously the verification of the security controls, the security posture, uh, and as a tool for red team activities, although um, even less so compared to pure bread uh, attack simulation tools. As I said, breach and attack simulation tend to be more of an audit tool. Um, it's, uh, uh, in my opinion, it's the equivalent of Nessus in the vulnerability assessment domain, or the, the, the equivalent of a, a vulnerability scanner. I'm using Nessus as a, um, you know, a very famous vulnerability scanner. So instead of, um, so instead of uh, scheduling uh, vulnerability assessment, we can schedule red team uh, execution or uh, adversary emulation execution over time. Um, and uh, the, the advantages are similar to the attack simulation tools. Uh, obviously, there are better, there is better visualization and uh, reporting than a simple assessment tool. Uh, uh, sorry, um, attack simulation tools. Uh, and uh, the cons and disadvantages is that breach and attack simulation uh, do run by very nature because they are audit tools on production environment, and therefore. Uh, also because of this, their attack simulation capabilities are limited. You know, there is not, um, you, know, you can't do everything you want just for the, for the sake of uh, protecting the, the production environment. And uh, uh, with that limitation also goes the limitation of the training use cases because, you know, you're not using the real malware, you're not using the real infection, um, and therefore the, 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 the training on, um, on, uh, 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 under live fire that you can do and verify that the team is able to uh, detect the security incidents, respond, remediate, you can't really uh, do that to the full extent uh, that you, know, you, you, you would want to do it. Uh, and that's where you know, attack simulation with cyber ranges uh, come in because um, they allow the simulation to be carried out in a sandbox environment, so anything goes and we can actually uh, simulate things to the full extent possible without uh, worrying about compromising a production environment. 
Um, when you're talking about attack simulation on uh, cyber ranges, really we have to distinguish between next generation cyber ranges and traditional cyber ranges. Now, a next generation cyber range and uh, uh, the definition that you have on, on this slide is from uh, the European Cybersecurity Organization in Europe, but a similar definition uh, is provided by NIST in, uh, in, uh, uh, in America, um, is that of a, a platform. A platform which includes a simulation environment, it also includes a number of components which are required for different use cases. Uh, in this case, we have you know, internet service simulation, attack simulation, user simulation, and the core uh, of all this is orchestration, whereby we have the simulation environment, we have the attacks, we have the users, we have uh, events, we have uh, uh, competent assessment, everything is orchestrated so that with you know, one or few clicks, you can actually execute an attack simulation and a user can experience that attack simulation. Uh, compare that to a traditional cyber range where you don't have the orchestration and traditionally you just have the simulation environment and then what uh, uh, an organization can do can uh, simulate attacks or whatever they want to simulate on top of the simulation environment and then uh, users are given access to the uh, combined simulation environment. Um, but because of the lack of orchestration is very manual there are obviously scripts and automation that vendors can produce, but ultimately it's not a very quick setup and execution because there is a lot of manual, uh, manual process in there. Um, what are the advantages of, a, of an attack simulation in a cyber range? Is obviously the, the, the sandbox environment. We can pretty much do whatever we like, and we can use real malware, real infectious documents, real uh, phishing emails with real attachments, and uh, uh, we can let the, the TTPs and the, 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 the attack campaigns that we have simulated completely um, uh, execute on the cyber range and uh, take through take the, the users through the entire uh, process from the detection, the, the response, the, you know, the triage, and then you know, the, the remediation because uh, we are dealing with a real malware. Um, and when it comes to next generation cyber ranges, you obviously have the additional advantages that all this can be actually executed very quickly with a simple click because you, you, know, you can uh, uh, reset the environment and then you know, execute the next attack and then reset it and execute the next attack and so on and so forth. Um, so that's uh, you know, a great advantage. And um, it's a very typical use case that you cannot achieve with other technologies, but you can with a, with a cyber range is... Uh, uh, simulating global APTs. You know, that's why you know, the, the NATO or a lot of you know, the, uh, the military uh, cyber exercises that are carried out, they actually use cyber ranges because they are simulating the execution of real uh, global advanced persistent threats and attack campaigns where we have real malware, real attackers uh, that are um, uh, using the uh, simulation environment and there we can also uh, put to the test the communication, coordination, of multiple teams uh, when it comes to international cybersecurity uh, incident or uh, threat actor. You cannot do that unless you use a cyber range. Uh, and to conclude, uh, this is again a very uh, interesting, uh, very interesting domain and has uh, grown quite a lot in the last few years. The key uh, technology trigger for the, uh, the attack simulation is agent uh, based attack simulation. Today, where the security of the organization depends on you know, the endpoints and, uh, and on the mobile devices, really the ability to uh, simulate attacks on each and every one of these devices is key. And therefore, agent-based now simulation has become very key to uh, all to deliver all these use cases that we have in uh, we have been discussing and, uh, that uh, that's the end of my presentation i hope you enjoyed it uh, please um, don't forget to uh, to follow us on linkedin on cyber ranges and silence for more uh, tips and uh, uh, advice around the area of uh, cyber range technology and uh, um, attack simulation enjoy the rest of the conference bye bye